Hey, Matthias. Sebastian. What are you doing? I'm getting my dive fork system ready for the trip to the Philippines. All right. Nice. Pretty okay. But uh, there's one more video to film before you leave. Say smile. Smile. Oh, no. Cheese. Well, anyways. Yeah, I know. I know. I was just getting, getting ahead of myself and getting everything ready. I am ready for today's video. Let's Perfect. do this. Hi and welcome back to the channel and a new episode of reviewing your underwater films. Yes, I'm still here. I haven't gone to the Philippines yet. I'm just, I just like to be prepared in time before going on such an amazing trip. How about you? I heard you're going on a trip too. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Where are you going? Um, I'm going to Lombok. Diving? Maybe a little bit. It's more like a uh, vacation with my wife. <laughs> Okay, moving along. <laughs> no one cares about the vacation with your wife. They wanted to know about diving. But okay, maybe you do one or two dives. You can tell us what the diving in Lombok is like. I will, I will, I Excellent. will. Excellent. But today, yes? No, today you want to you wanna go on? Yes. I, just, I th thought you can tell the guys what kind of holiday you just prepared. Oh, yes, of course I can. It's this one here. It's my absolute favorite underwater smartphone housing. And the guys who produced this housing, they actually happen to be the sponsors of today's video and the entire series as well. If you haven't heard of Dive Fork, well, then you should definitely go and look them up. They are the one manufacturer who has um, succeeded in creating an underwater smartphone housing, which works through the touch screen of your smartphone with the very special membrane they've included in the housing, you can use the touch screen even while being underwater. And that is pretty awesome. <laughs> that is pretty awesome, absolutely. Because now you don't need a third party app anymore to control your smartphone underwater. Uh, you can do it with the very uh, normal, the native, regular. Um, camera app that comes with your smartphone. So that way you're using your smartphone in the exact same way underwater as you would on land. Yeah, pretty cool. I will take mine definitely to Lombok. Uh, yeah, well, you can also use it in the shower if you don't go diving. <laughs> yeah. Just saying, you know, it works for that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll compare, we'll compare footage after our trips. <laughs> right. I'll show you some underwater footage in the Philippines, from the Philippines, and you can show me, well, I don't shower, know, shower I, don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if we want to see shower footage of yeah. you from Lombok. All right. But, okay, well, maybe you do want to see that, maybe don't. Maybe we don't. Maybe, maybe we don't. What we definitely want to see today is the video um, submitted by Augusto. And cool. he was on a trip uh, to the Bahamas. Yeah, and he filmed. I have to look it up. Um, he filmed the Canon G9X in a fantasy housing, mm -hmm. and he was using a pair of um, Solar Two Thousand lights. Nice. Um, uh, he told us he was doing um, the the white balance uh, manually underwater and used um, Premiere Pro for the post production process. Excellent. So um, well done, Augusto, for giving us all this information. Role model. Yep. This is Definitely. what everyone should do. Definitely. Nice. So, um, yeah, let's go to Bahamas. Let's go to the Bahamas.
right. Thank you, Augusta, very much for your submission. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think it's um, it's a nice overview um, of the diving and the Bahamas. And Augusto thought about like a, a intro, and then at the be- at the at the beginning, at the end, like uh, how to to end the movie. Um, I think there's a solid base. There's some nice shots in there, mm-hmm. um, but I think there are several areas um, where he could work on. Mm-hmm. And um, if I may continue, all right, then please, I'll do. please. Um, for for me personally, I think the main the main issue, um, I think, is um, the Executing, uh, filming, and editing deliberately. Mm-hmm. Um, I, ha- I had a imag- I had the feeling that you want to put everything you can in there. It's like I don't know in uh, in the filming you want to get use the lights, don't use the lights. Uh, get the shot of the turtle, get the shot of the shark, get a shot of a diver mm-hmm. of everything. Mm-hmm. And in the in the editing process as well, like um, try the speed ramping, try stabilization, try slow down the footage, yeah. stuff like that. And um, it's all good to try the things out, um, but yeah, everything has to be very deliberate to to reach a certain uh, level of quality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So if we start talking about um, your stability. I think there are some shots where you could cut for earlier mm-hmm. or get overall uh, in a more stable position. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, for my taste, a little bit too shaky. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the feeling gets more intense with the music yeah. because the music is quite intense. Uh, you, said, you said at the beginning it's, it's epic music. It gets very, very powerful yeah. Very quick, um, yeah, and I think so. It's um, yeah, it's quite hard to get it to get it all together. Mm-hmm. Then. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think I would put it in a way that the way that you've captured your shots, Augusto, and the music, that combination makes the whole film look rather rushed. You know, it's it's it, it feels a bit. Like it's just a little bit too much. The music is a bit too intense, as you were saying yourself. I, I find the same thing here. And I think with the shots, Sebastian's right. I think that it would probably be better for you, Augusta, to not you know, go for a quantity, not to try to capture as many shots as you can throughout the dive, but maybe um, maybe focus more on the quality of the shots and try to to envision what shots you want to capture and then try to go for those shots and set up the shots in a way that you go down and you take a moment to look around yourselves and uh, realize where the sun's coming from, uh, whether or not there's any current, what the environmental condition is like, where the marine life is, and then decide on how you're best going to be approaching the, the marine life or the scenery that you want to capture and go for that for that shot. And if you're not happy with it, go a second and a third time for that shot until you're happy with that shot. And make it a priority to come up with five to ten good shots on a dive rather than trying to capture uh, 50 shots and they're all sort of not ideal shots that you can work with in post-production. Because it's going to make your life a lot easier if you have stable, well-exposed shots uh in your editing software that you can work with, it's just going to make that process of putting the clips together then much, much easier and smoother for you. So I think that's something that I would recommend to you to prioritize the quality over the quantity of the shots that you collect. Yeah. And uh, and the, the take your time part is as well valid for the, for the post-production uh, process. Um, what I often do is if I, I edit a scene or a specific part, I just leave it go away mm. and then come back and mm-hmm. t- uh, take a look at it again mm-hmm. and, and and check if the message I want to transport or the, the the things I want to show if they are clearly visible yeah and and the audience can pick it up and and, and see it yeah. or do I have the feeling it is too shaky uh, I see something I don't, don't want to have in a frame something like that um, um two things pop in my mind when I think about a film the one thing is the um, I want to call it the bucket shot 
of the on on the boat is just underwater than the shot of um on the boat. <laughs> Why are laughing? Bu- yeah, the bucket what, shot. Yeah, but you know bucket. what a bucket what, yeah, yeah, what a bucket shot is? Yeah. It's like a shot you've got on your bucket list. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> I, I, okay, yeah. No, I wasn't aware. Yeah, you weren't. You yeah. weren't referring to that. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Okay. No, I wasn't. Um, <laughs> no, no, I realize it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not the bucket shot. Um, That's but why the shot I was of the bucket. Yeah. Um, it's like in if you watch the whole sequence, it's it's it doesn't fit in there, mm. um, and some or most of the time you will realize yourself if you watch your video. Um, again and think about mm. is it is it clearly for the audience and as well it, the taking time part is the slow the slowing down footage of the the gray fish um the slowing down oh the crayfish yeah, yeah. the gray it went, it went in a night and yeah. he's coming out and the thing was slowed down which is not a bad thing per se but i think it could play around with the the way it gets slowed down. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some options called optical flow just to get it uh, more smooth, but it's it takes time. And oh, this yeah. is and this is yeah, take your time to to edit uh, yeah. as yeah. well. You take your time for filming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. These these shots there were two shots actually. There was this <laughs> bucket shot, and there was a a shot of uh, I think it was the the communication antenna on the on the upside, on the top side of the top deck of the boat. Um, they were pretty random and I don't really understand why you've put them in there, whether you've needed some filling shots, um, but they're just like, they're not showing anything specific and they didn't really make sense. Also, I would try to keep the sequencing, when we talk about sequencing, I would try to keep all your night dive shots sort of together at the end of the film probably because that makes most sense for you know the viewer if you have you start off with daytime diving and then you end your film with nighttime diving and then the last shot as you come out that was the idea was really good to have a shot coming out of the water uh, the ladder up to the back of the boat and finish the 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 film that way i just think that that shot was not very well executed because it's shaky it's crooked it's it's just that like it's just not a shot i would put into a film and here I think again was what I said before. Um, during a livable trip, you have at least three, four, maybe even five night dives. So you've got plenty of opportunities to capture that shot if you want to use that shot, right? So you, you can do the shot over and over and over again until you're happy with the shot. So uh, I would have done that and not stuck to you know a shot that doesn't really. It's just quality-wise doesn't really fit into that film. I wouldn't really use it there. Yeah. Really, yeah. Right. That's pretty much all I've got on my list here. What about you? Um, no, I think I could... No, I have all my points here. You have all your points. Excellent. Yeah. Do you want to sum it up then? Sure. Augusto, once again, thank you for your submission. And um, I just want to sum it up a little bit. And uh, we like that you thought about a whole story for your film. You thought about an intro with uh, showing the boat, then going into the water, and at the end, leaving the water, going back to the boat. Um, we think you have some nice shots in there and some nice shot ideas in there, so you have a solid base to work on. Um, we think you can work on um, the deliberate execution um, of the of the filming and of the post-production. Um, most important thing, take your time. Think about what you need, what you want to do, and then do it uh, in yeah, deliberately and take your time. And um, the second point we think you can uh, think of is working with music. Um, when you think of music, be careful with the music you choose um, fitting the footage. In your case, it was a very epic, very rushed um, piece of music, and it's quite hard then to fit um, to yeah to the to the scenery and and to the footage shown. Anything to add? Now I'm pretty happy with with your summary. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. As always, we're going to be putting um, Augusto's uh, or the link to Augusto's video and his YouTube channel down in the video description below. So feel free to head over there and pay him a visit and see what other content he's got on his channel. If you guys want us to review one of your underwater films, then please do send us an email to contact at matthiaslieber.com uh, and include some information like what equipment you've used to film uh, the content, also where it was filmed, anything that you find might be useful for us in reviewing your film, giving you some uh, some detailed feedback on, uh, on your submission. 
Right now we have about nine to 12 months of waiting time on the submissions, but you can get around that waiting time by becoming a member of our YouTube channel. And if you decide to sign up for the Underwater Filmmaker membership plan, you will get apart from other benefits like discounts on, uh, on online courses and online digital products, your um, submissions will be prioritized, which means that as soon as we get it, we will watch it, review it and um, submit it or not submit it, but publish it here on the channel within a couple of weeks instead of well nearly a year of waiting time that you would have otherwise so that's the way how you can get about that there is a button down below this video which says become a member and that is the uh the way to go and become a member of our youtube channel and again you talked a lot yeah i know but so, <laughs> you talked a lot too so but you but you guys can do as well is if you're in the mood and clicking buttons and bells and stuff like that uh, give, us a, give us a like, uh, hit that subscription button, that uh, notification bell, and uh, leave a comment in the section below. Let us know what you learned from the video today. Um, yeah. And other than that, see you next week. Have a great week, guys. Don't forget to capture all your amazing underwater adventures. We'll see you next Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.